Well, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today on our channel. Today I want to spend time in Leviticus chapter 23 verses 15 and 16. And the reason I want to do that is because um, yesterday around the world the Feast of Pentecost was celebrated. The Feast of Pentecost is found in Leviticus 23 verses 15 to 16. But before I do that I want to um, do a little briefing on the whole chapter 23. I, I've done a video that you can actually uh, find on YouTube. One of these days I'm going to learn how to put the link above so that you can click on it. But I think uh, what I would like to do is I would like to see if I can do it maybe a, a little more at length because I was just getting started with this YouTube and learning how to do it. So I was rushing through it. But the feast, uh, excuse me, but Leviticus 23 deals with the feast of the Lord. And this is the chapter where Moses, well, God commanded Moses to tell the Israelites that they were to celebrate feasts throughout the year. And uh, the first feast, for example, was the Feast of Passover. And the last feast was the Feast of Tabernacles. And all these feasts, although for the Israelites, it meant that they were to commemorate something the Lord had done, like, you know, uh, the Feast of Passover when God delivered them from Egypt. Other times they were, to, they were to commemorate how the Lord provided for them through the harvest of wheat or barley. Other times it was just for gathering. And other times to celebrate the Day of Atonement where God cleanse them from all their sin. Well, for us, prophetically, this feast pretty much gave us the plan of God's salvation throughout history. From the first feast where our salvation begins with the Lamb of God, uh, Jesus Christ, slain for our sins, to the last feast, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. That was the feast where the Jews looked back to the time where they were wandering in the desert and they lived or dwelled in tents. Well, that Feast of Tabernacles one day will be fulfilled in us when we look back to this life we have here on earth. We live here as pilgrims. But one day is coming when Jesus will establish his kingdom and we will not be pilgrims anymore. We will be citizens of the kingdom forever. Not, not looking forward anymore to death and pain and sorrow but living with Jesus as our sovereign king. So it's an amazing study. Like I said, I did a, 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 some video a couple of months ago, but I would like to do another one just to uh, bless you as I've been blessed. Today, like I said, I want to do Leviticus 23 verses 15 to 16 because I want to talk a little bit about Pentecost and how important it is for us to remember this date in our lives as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is how it reads. Verse 15 says, from the day after the Sabbath, the day you bring the bundle of grain to be lifted up as a special offering, count off seven full weeks. Keep counting until the day after the Sabbath, 50 days later. Then present an offering of new grain to the Lord. Now the time phrases I want you to, uh, uh, for you to underline or to bring your, to your attention are from the day after the Sabbath, the day you bring the bundle of grain to be lifted up as a special offering, count off seven full weeks. Then it says in verse 16, keep counting on, until, excuse me, keep counting until the day after the seventh Sabbath, 50 days later. See what, see what just happened right now is that if you were reading the Bible and you were going through Leviticus, your mind went somewhere else. And if you were paying attention to the preacher and he started talking about this, numbers and days and Sabbaths and keep counting, you, you went somewhere else and the preacher is talking to himself. If you fell asleep during those, you know, 20 seconds, please wake up, uh, press the like button so that more people can continue to watch these videos and be blessed as well. And subscribe to our channel so that you can receive these videos uh, week after week and you can be strengthening your walk with the Lord. But the reason that it's important for us to notice those time references, the day after the Sabbath, seven weeks, 50 days later, is because all those details in the Word of God would be fulfilled to the letter in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. See, uh, Jesus rose on the day after the Passover Sabbath or the Sabbath they brought the bundle of grain to be lifted up as a special offering. Jesus had already fulfilled the feast of Passover by becoming the Lamb of God for our sins. But now, in the resurrection, he was fulfilling the feast of first fruit by being the first one to rise from the dead. 
Well, 50 days later, after Jesus rose from the dead, this is what we read in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. This is what we read. We read that when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all together in one place. And all together meant those 120 something believers praying. Suddenly, a sound like that of a violent wind, rushing wind, came from heaven and it filled the whole house where they were staying. And tongues, like flames of fire that were divided, appeared to them and rested on each one of them. Then they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, see, we don't have calendars like we used to back in the days. Uh, at Christmas time or in December, you will go to the store and they will give you a calendar. And those calendars will have the most important days of the year, like Christmas, Thanksgiving, Passover, Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, and so on. Now, the calendars we have are on, are on Apple calendars or YouTube, uh, Google calendars. So in order for us to know when those dates fall, those nice uh, holidays, we have to go to the Internet and find Passover, find Pentecost. And they will tell you, for example, in this year, it will tell you that April 8th was Passover day and May 31st is Pentecost. Well, a lot of churches don't even mention Pentecost anymore, but a lot of churches still do. See, the day of Pentecost is the day churches around the world celebrate the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon those first 120-something believers praying in the upper room. This event is, is what gave birth to the church of Jesus Christ some 2,000 years ago. Now, here's a question. How does this relate to us? Well, there's more than one way this relates to us. But for the sake of time, I'm just going to share only one. See, the Feast of Pentecost was also called the Feast of Harvest. See, the next feast after Pentecost in the Jewish calendar was the Feast of Trumpets. But that didn't happen until September. So what happened was, it is that between these two feasts, I don't remember if it was the Feast of Trumpets or, or another feast, but there was a, a period of about three months in which they didn't do nothing but work really hard in the harvest that was taking place. See, in between these two feasts, God's children were busy in the harvest. So when the Holy Spirit came to fill those believers with power, what it means to us is that the reason those believers were filled with power was because those believers were going to be busy in the harvest until the next feast, prophetically speaking, would be fulfilled in the life of God's children. Those believers, Jesus has said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That's what Jesus meant. I will fill people with my spirit so that they would get busy in the harvest. And when the powers of darkness, when Satan himself tried to destroy what they're doing, they will not prevail against it because these believers, these churches would be filled with the Holy Spirit or with the Holy Ghost. See, the church of Jesus Christ has suffered attack after attack from the kingdom of darkness, century after century, but they have not prevailed against it. For 2,000 years, the church of Jesus has been suffering attack, suffering attack, and they continue to go on helping people come to a relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. You name it, empires, philosophies, philosophies, uh, scientists, not science, scientists, because science and the God and the Bible, they get along really well. But scientists who interpret science, and these scientists, sometimes they, they hate God, they hate church, they hate religion. So they use the science, they interpret their science against the Word of God. But science and the Word of God, they get along really well. But you name it, dictators, politicians have come and gone. And Jesus continued to build his church by filling believers with the Holy Spirit. That's why we celebrate Passover. And followers of Jesus Christ who are filled with the Holy Spirit are building the church by staying busy, by serving the Lord in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not the, the harvest of wheat or barley, of course. It's the harvest of people because that's what Jesus came to die for. He came to die for people. He rose from the dead for people. When he comes back, he will come back for people. So Holy Spirit-filled believers are always finding a way to get busy in the work 
of the harvest. Pastors, churches, ministries, believers filled with the Holy Spirit are always active one way or another in the work of the harvest. They pray without ceasing. They serve wholeheartedly. They give generously. They share the gospel faithfully. They love extravagantly. And they live abundantly. Now, the trumpet hasn't sound yet, which means Pentecost still, Pentecost still going on. The Holy Spirit is still filling believers with His power to do the work of the harvest through the preaching, teaching, and living the life in the name of Jesus Christ. So what I want to what I want to encourage you today as we celebrate Pentecost is that you will pray this simple prayer that you will simply pray Holy Spirit fill me with your power fulfill Pentecost in me fill me Holy Spirit with your love fill me with your joy fill me with your peace fill me with your patient patience fill me with your kindness fill me with your goodness fill me with your gentleness fill me with your faithfulness fill me holy spirit with self-control so that i can be a blessing to somebody in the work of the harvest so thank you so much for joining us today i hope this was a blessing to you please don't forget to press the like button don't forget to subscribe and to share this video with as many people as you can maybe someone out there will be filled by the holy spirit by just simply praying the prayer i mentioned here fill me holy spirit fulfill pentecost in me God bless you guys. We'll see you next time.